நூற்று ஆண்டுகளுக்கு முன்னாடி ஏட்டுக்கல்வி கூட இல்லாத காலத்தில் எத்தனையோ நம்மளோட பாட்டியாயாக்கள்லாம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா கோர்ட்டு வாசல் ஏறி இறங்கி இடங்களில் உள்ள வில்லங்கத்தையெல்லாம் தீர்த்து சொத்துக்களை மீட்டெடுத்து எட்டு பத்து பிள்ளைங்களை வந்து கரையேற்றி எவ்வளவோ பணிகள் செஞ்சுருக்கிறாங்க அப்போ ஏட்டுக்கல்வியே இல்லாத காலத்திலேயே செட்டிநாட்டு பெண்கள் முடங்கி கிடந்ததே கிடையாது நூறு ஆண்டுகளுக்கு முன்பே அவங்க இவ்வளோ செஞ்சுருக்காங்கன்னா இப்போ நினச்சி பாருங்கள் சமத்துவமும் சமநிலையும் இருக்கக்கூடிய இந்த உலகத்தில் அவங்க என்னென்னமோ செய்யலாம் எல்லைகளே இல்லாத இந்த உலகத்தில் அவர்கள் சாதிக்க வேண்டியது பல இருக்கின்றன பாரதி கண்ட புதுமை பெண்கள் இப்போது நினைவாகி வருகிறது ஆமாம் ஸோ இந்த பெண்களை பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் எல்லை தாண்டி அவர்கள் வர வேண்டும் அப்படிங்கிறதுக்காக தான் இன்றைய பேனல் செஷன் எப்படி ஏற்பாடு பண்ணியிருக்காங்கன்னா ஒரு செட்டி நாட்டில் மிக பிரபலமாக மிக அருமையாக ஒரு சேவை மனப்பான்மையோடு பணியாற்றி வர்ற ஒரு ஆட்சி அவங்க வந்து மலேசியால் மிக பிரபலமாக மிக சிறப்பாக தொழில் நடத்தி வரும் இரண்டு பெண்களோட பேச போகிறாங்க ஆமாம் ஒரு சிறு கலந்துரை கலந்துரையாடல் இடம்பெறப் போகிறது இந்த கலந்துரையாடலை வழி நடத்துபவரை நாம் வந்து இப்போ மேடைக்கு அழைக்க வருகிறோம் திருமதி உமையாள் பழனியப்பன் அவர்கள் ஸ்பாஸ்டிக் சொசைட்டி ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு துணைத் தலைவர் நகரத்தார் வாழ்க்கை முறை என்ற புத்தகத்தை வெளியிட்டிருக்கிறார் இப்போ கூட நிறைய பேர் கியூ பண்ணி வாங்கிட்டு இருந்தீங்க பாருங்கள் அதற்கான எழுத்தாளர் அவர் அந்த நகரத்தார் வே அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு அவங்க ஒரு புக்கு வெளியிட்டு இருக்காங்க அந்த புக் இன்னைக்கும் நாளைக்கும் வந்து இட்ஸ் அவைலபிள் ஹியர் நீங்கள் யார் வேணுமோ போய் வாங்கிக்கலாம் ஸோ இப்போவே அதுக்கு கியூ பண்ண வேண்டாம் இந்த மாதிரி ஆட்சி மாதிரி ஒன்று ரெண்டு பேர் செட்டி நாட்டில் இருந்தாங்கன்னாவே நிச்சயமாக நம்ம பாரம்பரியமும் கலாச்சாரமும் பண்பாடும் நிச்சயமாக கட்டிக்காக்கப்படும் பல ஆண்டுகளுக்கு அவர்களுக்கு ஒரு மிகப்பெரிய கைதட்டல் கொடுப்போம் ஆட்சி Next, we have Ms. Amy Blair, CEO of the Batik Boutique. For those who are not familiar with Batik, Batik is an ancient art form that has been practiced for 2,000 years in Southeast Asia. This intricate dyeing process creates beautiful, detailed designs that are unique to the region they come from. Yeah, it is notable that today more than 50 artisans work with Batik Boutique to gain a fair, sustainable income and marketable skills. Let us welcome Ms. Amy Blair, who runs a business with a purpose. Next, we have Ms. Jasmine Lua, co-founder and CEO of Recommend Group, which connects customers to more than 40,000 trusted service professionals regionally, including interior designers, renovation contractors, carpenters, painters, aircon servicemen and cleaners. Let's give a big round of applause for the ladies. And the stage is yours. Thank you for those lovely words of introduction. Are we ready after the lunch? Can we go? Okay, let's start. Number we are all Nagaratas. Let's start. Pulayar uh, koti kitte. We'll start. Kulla kulla ne, gunda bagre ne, vella pulayare, vinaya murti. So today, you know what this is called? Super brain yoga. So we have started with yoga. It's midday, and I hope you're all charged and regenerated. Good afternoon, everybody. Let's warm up with some fun, light-hearted uh, light icebreaker questions. I'll just ask a question and you just need to put your ha hands up if you are for the for or, uh, thing. Yes or no, okay? The first question goes, do you want men and women to play an equal part in business? Yes? Hands up. No? no. Thank you. It's just not for judging, it's just to feel the pulse of the... Uh, audience okay this is very interesting question okay do you want the man and woman to play an equal part in homemaking oh the hands are very low <laughs> so do i take it as no as majority <laughs> yes huh? women will want yes but the men <laughs> yes. ah thank you <laughs> would you prefer your spouse to be in a profession or a business? Profession? Business. Okay, good. 
Okay, this is another nice question. Whose family business would you prefer to join? Your parents or your in-laws? Parents? In-laws. <laughs> but Chetiyar's in-laws, I inherit one of them. Okay. Scientifically, whose brain is larger? A man or a woman? Man is the right answer. 10% more, bigger than the woman's. <laughs> Okay, who is a good strategic decision maker? A man or a woman? That's the right answer. <laughs> okay. Thank you, audience. That was a lovely, interesting uh, response from you. Last June, when I was in Malaysia, our IBCN chairman, Dato Ramnathan, requested me to be the speaker in this conference. I initially thought of sharing the insight of the book I was writing the Nagratar way. The freedom and support I had from my husband through the journey of the book encouraged me to contribute and lead in my own way with my highest potential. Today, I stand in front of you to talk about ladies trending, equal partnership and leadership. Equal partnership and leadership is what the Nagratas have always lived through in the yester years. In fact, the Archies, as uh, the women are respect uh, respectfully called, Rule the home. It was Archie's Rajyam, as they say. Since the Chetiyar was away in Southeast Asian countries, uh, may, uh, doing business and uh, making, uh, bringing back money for the family. Many of their establishments, uh, Vatikada, etc., were named after uh, their Archies, uh, who, who were their strength, and also partnered and contributed to the, to the business. Nagratas, both Archies and Chetiyars, lived life on their own terms and were always born leaders. It is only later that when we moved away from owning to uh, working for others with the IT boom and globalization, many children took jobs to serve multinational companies in different parts of the world. And with that, we drifted away from our money lending and business pra practices. Today, men as well as women excel in all fields. Case, point, case in point, Indra Noe being the longest serving CEO of PepsiCo for 12 years. Society has changed. There is progress on the equality between the sexes. This has been reflected in language also. Gender neutral terms have been sought for several professions. Mankind is humankind and chairperson is chair, uh, a chairman is chairperson now. Gender equality is essential to create a balance in the society. Both a woman's brain and a man's brain have distinctive and unique uh, qualities. When they work together, it can bring about a beautiful harmony and one complete glorious whole. Women and men need to be equal, but they don't necessarily have to be alike. Men can't do what women can and vice versa. As the saying goes, men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Generally speaking, a woman can envision well, while the man can execute well. We must understand these differences and embrace the strength. When they partner, uh, 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 when they partner together whilst respecting and using each other's strengths, it will bring about the best balance leading to everlasting success in work and prosperity at home. We, uh, we now have, uh, what is equality? Equality in opportunities, rights, responsibilities, commitment and relationship. J uh, Jasmine will talk about this now. Hello, everyone. So what is equality? Um, when they gave me this question, I actually needed to Google and talk about it quite a bit because I guess being in Malaysia, um, being the elder of two daughters, I never really felt that equality was, uh, you know, uh, a, a problem. You know, our, my parents gave us equal opportunity whenever we needed to go for university. It wasn't like, you know, should we educate her older brother or should we educate this lady who would likely... Um, leave the workforce, you know, have, have six children and never need her, her university degree again. So I had to actually think about equality and what that meant, right? Um, I think most people think about equality like, you know, you have got five children, everybody needs to be given the same resources. So if you put aside $100,000 for child number one, you should also have that $100,000 plus, um, you know, inflation uh, for child number five. 
Uh, we imagine that if we give the same resources to a bunch of different people, then theoretically they would have the same chances, or at least you'll feel good about yourself because you were fair. I think the truth is we were all born with different IQ, looks, health, mindset, genes, um, and privilege as well. The list goes on. And apparently, um, I have just learned that a, uh, a man's brain is bigger. I did not realize. I thought it was just the, the skull that was thicker. But you know, you know, you learn something new every day. So I think um, you know, we are not equal at the point of birth, and certainly the way that our life pans out uh, is not equal as well. And creating a system where we're trying to make things fair for people by distributing resources equally uh, is unlikely to address the root cause of the problem, that we all want different things, and um, you know, equality for us, for every single person, means something different. I feel that equality is more about giving people the same chance to achieve their life goals, whatever those goals are, right? It could be the CEO of a multinational company, uh, like Indra Nui, a tech startup founder like myself, a working mother, a stay-at-home mother, um, a woman who has three children, a woman who does not want to have any children, a woman who does not even need a man in her life. I believe these could be you know, goals that are viewed equally in the eyes of people. And, and so for, for this to happen, right, for us to acknowledge that People could have all types of different types of goals that you might not even understand. Um, three things need to happen. I think the first one is that we need to stop defining for others what their goals should be. There should be no comments and assumptions that you are not smart enough to lead PepsiCo. Who are you? You are from some you know, part of India, part of Malaysia, part of KL. Um, who are you to lead PepsiCo? Well, she has certainly showed that you know, she has the ability to do so. You are a woman's place is at home. Is at home. You're a mother. Your first priority are your children. That could be true for some women, but we have to be open to the fact that that might not be true for other women, and we must stop judging them for their goals. You studied too hard to be a, just a teacher. I've heard you know, my friends being told, my very intelligent uh, friends who are game-changing in every way, I've heard that being told, you are too smart to be a teacher. What can be more important than educating our future generations? Right. So we need to stop defining uh, what is a reasonable goal for someone and acknowledge that people's goals might not be the same as yours. The second one, I think, is we need to be aware that certain roles, situations and opportunities naturally uh, exclude women. So I'm very glad to know that you know, they provided us very you know, uh, comfortable and low chairs here. I've been on so many panels where all the chairs were very high are very small, and when you sit on them, you always have the fear that someone's going to be able to you know, look under your skirt. And that is the fear that women have. You know, they put us in uncomfortable situations because nobody ever came up to say that wearing a skirt, we do not like to sit on cocktail chairs in front of you know, 400 people. Right? It is those kind of situations. You know, um, business situations where we make decisions either on the, you know, the, the golf uh, the golf field, or in the smoking room, or drinking whiskey at 1 a.m. There are many decisions that are made in situations like that. That is true. But it does exclude people, right? It naturally excludes people. It excludes people who have other things that they would rather do at 1 a.m. in the morning, rather than drinking whiskey. So certain situations where, where you know, when we create our companies, where we create um, platforms for people to succeed, make deals and all that, it naturally excludes minorities, women, and we need to be aware of these sort of things if we really want to give women um, you know, equality in the workplace. And the third one is, I think, and it's, some, it, you know, it's something that I learned myself very much. Um, I tend to be quite assertive, uh, domineering. My husband called me bossy, but I'm trying not to, you know, I'm not trying to see it that way. And for maybe five years, the first five years of you know, leading a company, I always identify all the women and I tell them, hey, look, you are not speaking up enough. You need to sit straighter. You need to, your voice needs to be louder. I, I need to be hearing you from one kilometer away. Why are you not speaking up, right? And, and, and there was this lady, a colleague of mine, her name is Chloe. Um, I was always telling her, you have got so much potential, but you will not speak up. Why will you not speak louder? Everybody is speaking louder than you. And I've realized that she might not speak up in big meetings, but if she had a point of view, she would say it. If I disagreed in my loud, domineering way, she would just keep quiet. And then after the meeting, she would come to me and say, hey, Jess, I really didn't agree to, you know, with whatever you said, and here's what I think. And then if I didn't agree, the next day she would come back and say, like, you know, I tried your method, and actually I still don't agree with you, and this is what I think. And she kept doing it again and again until 
you know, I gave up and she got her way. And she consistently got her way over six or seven years of working with me. And I realized that not all types of leadership needs to be domineering person that speaks the loudest and, you know, gets their point across. That, you know, another form of leadership, instead of being the domineering, hard, assertive manner, could be a flexible, a resilient, a tough um, type of leadership. And this is something that many, many women uh, are able to do naturally. Because of the way that society is, we have to be tough, resilient and flexible as well to be able to get what we want uh, and the out outcome that we seek for, even though there are so many hard, assertive and, you know, um, frankly, un un unfriendly bodies around. So this is, um, you know, my three points. The first one, um, stop defining what a woman should be and what a woman shouldn't be, you know, let her form her own view. The second one is try not to create structures or platform where it naturally makes it harder for women to succeed. And the third one, we must see women, their leadership styles, their ways, the way that they, they handle business as different, but also very important and equally able to bring about success. Um, and so these are sort of like, you know, my three points. Maybe we need to de redefine what we understand about equality and aim for something like maybe equity where both men and women can participate, can grow and also benefit from um, the advancement in society and economy. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. We, we now have uh, Amy talk on what is the differences in understanding and accepting equality. Um, first of all, welcome to Malaysia. Um, I'm sure you think that I'm from here, but I'm actually not originally from Malaysia. Is that better? Yeah. Um, so I'm actually from the United States, but I've lived in Malaysia for 15 years. So I think I come at this topic um, from a different perspective, not completely as an American, but not maybe completely as Asian as well, but hopefully something in between. Um, yeah. So I think when we have this conversation about equality with men and women, especially related to business and leadership, often we're asking ourselves the question, um, who's better? Who's a better leader? So when I ask you this question in your head, you can say it out loud if you want. It won't offend me if it's a different answer than I think. But who do you think in general in, in life and in business and work, who's a better leader, a man or a woman? Man? Yeah. Okay. Do any women or men think that women are better leaders? Okay. <laughs> so I grew up in a home in the south part of the United States that was quite traditional. My family was very traditional as well. My father was the police chief in our town, and we were very active in our church community. And in that day and time in the United States, believe it or not, we had conservative beliefs, um, especially related to men and women. So I grew up with a quite strong, uh, domineering father and a mother who followed trend and supported him very well. So this was the model that I grew up in, and some part of me thought that was the right way to do things, right? Um, except the problem that I had is that my personality, uh, my wiring was actually more like my father's than my mother's, naturally. So I was vocal, um, strong, opinionated. Um, I was compassionate. I had, I had a bent towards um, justice. When I saw something unfair or someone who needed help, I was always wired to ask why and to want to help them, but beyond that, to want to fix the system. This was something in me that my dad was very much a part of. So growing up, he actually encouraged me, even though I was a girl, or sometimes referred to as just a girl, um, that I could do anything I wanted. So I had a very traditional upbringing, but yet, again, my personality type is a bit more like my father, but he did something very good for me, was encouraged me to be me, um, to learn how to express me and understand that I could do basically anything I put my mind to, and it wasn't about my gender. So I think this is where, if you fast forward now, um, I run a social enterprise here in Malaysia. I started this company 
based on this idea that women in particular that I met here in Malaysia that were living in poverty, that were living in the low cost housing, the government housing areas, they had children, they had um, basic education, they needed to earn income and money, but they didn't have a real opportunity. They didn't have anything for them that was um, specific to like the timings they could work because maybe they were expected culturally to cook and clean and take the kids to school and you know handle the things at home. They had certain hours in a day, but they couldn't get a job that was going to pay them anything worth their time. Um, they didn't have the skill sets. And so I came to Malaysia um, with a background in tourism and hospitality, and then I met these women, and I merged this concept together of batik, which is a national textile like this, um, a hand-blocking textile, similar to what you might have in India, but we use wax here with it. Um, and then I merged this with what I knew about the tourism industry, and I created a model that was specifically focused on women. And so I thought, yay, women, we're equal now, and we're this, I'm giving them the opportunity. And I realized several years into starting my business, I, I made taglines and slogans all about women, women, we're empowering women, we're empowering women, because I believe that the women wanted to work and the men were lazy. That's what I saw, <laughs> you know, and then I saw there's children involved, and as a mother myself, I knew that we as parents will do anything it takes to take care of our children, right? So I knew that they had intention to want to work, but they needed opportunity. So I was very big on championing the rights of women, 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 raising women up to be leaders, raising women up to understand they too could do these things in their life. And then somewhere along the way, it kind of hit me, actually, Amy, you're no better than the rest of the world saying the opposite. Um, you're also like discriminating against men. You're also not including half of the world's population and half of the population in Malaysia. And actually, a lot of our artisans who do the painting and the blocking of the batik were men. But I just kind of was like, yeah, 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 that they, they're fine. Just pay them what is fair, and but we're helping the women, you know? <laughs> and so I realized um, there was a problem with my thinking and in that model. And so I took several years to question and understand, even change some of the way we wrote, some of the way I spoke, some of the vision that we had as a company, and really started understanding this. So I think what, what I've come to... I want to pose to you, yeah? See what you think. I think in general, most people in this context, especially in this part of the world, would answer the question the same. Who's a better leader? I think the majority would still probably say men. And we have reasons for that, right? We know that in general, men can um, keep their calm in certain situations. They don't use emotion as much. They would maybe use more logic. We know they can handle um, certain stresses and situations better. We know that um, they're generally known to be more critical thinking in their, in their decision making, right? And so they're also generally more presented as confident. They're generally presented as in, in control. So that leads us to a level of trust as well. So I think we often give more like trust immediately to a man in a situation, in a position than we would necessarily a woman. Um, at the same time, I think what I'm discovering is the question to ask ourselves is not who's better, right? Because like one man just said here, thank you, it's, it's actually neither, it's not related to gender. What I wanna to present to you today is not who's better at this um, and what is our role in this, but actually um, can we both be seen as capable, can we both be seen as equal in who we are but different? And can there be a place for both of these types of people in the world, both in business and in leadership. I, I propose to you, yes, we can. So the P Research Center, this is based in the United States, they did a survey showing that 62% of respondents said neither men nor women is inherently better in terms of leadership and business. Um, both people, so both a man and a woman can learn skills and display characteristic traits that are important for leaders some of which are being honest. Can a man be honest? You better say yes. <laughs> Can a woman be honest? Yes. That's not gender related. Those are choices and skills we each make in our own character, right? Um, can we handle pressure? Yes, both men and women can learn. I've got three children. If you think I cannot handle pressure at this point, then like, you know, of course. And men can handle pressure. Um, and can you do what you think is right? Can you operate with ethics and in doing what you think is right? Both men and women can do those things. 
These are the traits that are seen actually as inherently important in leadership, okay? And in, in the business uh, specter as well. So interesting that this research center showed 62% of respondents said, neither is inherently better, though there are differences in our styles of leadership. And that gender did possibly play a role in that. Um, another interesting factor that seemed to play a role in it, remember this is based in the United States, so it would maybe be different in another country, is political views. You know, in the US there's Republican and Democrat, and they in this survey it was quite interesting for me to read, they talked about you know, this person saw man as one way in this, this political party. So we think about in your context, whether it's politics or culture, um, our family background, our personalities, what is it that makes us think inherently one is better than the other, right? So some of the traits, I've been asked to share with you some of the traits inherently in men and women as leaders. I don't think this will surprise you, and I'm also not being conclusive to say this is all men and all women lead like this, right? But generally speaking, women are known to lead with more compassion and empathy. They work out compromise in a different way, thinking on what's best for everyone involved. Um, they generally have higher percentages of providing fair pay and wages for their employees, and they think more often about the impact of their business or their work on society. So are those good types, are those good characteristics of a leader? to be compassionate, empathetic, compromise, pay fairly and think about your impact in the world, right? I would like to follow a leader like that, right? Um, for men, generally speaking, they were known to be higher in risk taking. This is a good thing at times in a business. There are times when you need to take risk, very calculated risk, but you take a risk. Um, they handle pressure. Um, they're they're prof more profitable in negotiating deals. Um, and they, they decision make with more logical strategy involved. So these are things, would you like to be following someone in your business or in, in your life that knew how to take risk, handled pressure well, was able to negotiate on your behalf? Yeah, I mean, that's half of what you do in a business, right? So I think the question I just wanna keep posing, I want us to get away, I wanna leave you with this thought that we get away with who's better um, that who has more advantages or disadvantages is actually the wrong question to ask. The question is to say, how are we, who are we, um, and what role can we play? So in my perspective, I think diversity is the way forward. There are generally certain career paths and certain types of businesses that maybe would be more beneficially ran by a man. And there are some that might traditionally be read, handled by a woman. For me, in a social enterprise, one of the, we're focused on three Ps. We say people, profit, planet, right? So my husband has actually come into the company. I am the CEO. <laughs> At home, he's the CEO, but in the workplace, I'm the CEO. And he, though, has an MBA and has come into the company to help us handle one of the Ps of profit. And I've learned a lot from him and gotten better. But my focus has been on the people and the planet. And so this is, my point is saying, we're very different if you know us in our personalities and our leadership skills. One person does need to take the lead, but the others can actually support and follow that. So I want you, as you go back, as you think about like your life and the things you're doing, to maybe ask yourself a question differently as not who's better, do we need this or that, but who, who can fit this role and how can we work better together? Thank you. Thank you, Amy. I'm now going to talk on the role of women in our heritage, history, and mythology. Women have always been the better halves of a human society. Women have played a significant role in conserving and protecting the society and its heritage. They have performed the role of carriers of oral histories and narratives while themselves uh, uh, themselves being the active bearers and symbols of our social and cultural traditions. This is possible with the grace and love showered by femininity and this tendency lies at the core of womanhood. Swami Vivekananda emphasized on the role of women empowerment with uh, scientific uh, rationality and modernity. He chose to invoke uh, the ancient texts, the Vedas themselves, to validate his accounts and ideas of womanhood. 
he observed their scientific, uh, the, their significant contribution as equals in shaping the social structure and uh, order of the Hindu society. As equals, sorry, uh, 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 as equals in, uh, in, in the social structure and order of the Hindu society. Mahatma Gandhi mobilized women, motivating them to participate in the national freedom movement. He based his Kadi movement entirely on women's participation and acknowledged that they were the backbone of his vision of economic independence. Sister Nivedita, an ardent disciple of Swami Vivekananda, was one of the most vibrant reformers of having introduced a progressive education system for women in India based on the in, uh, indigenous culture and their traditions. She preached that modern economic activity and modern science are compatible with Hindu spirituality. The Hindu scriptures describe women as the embodiment of Shakti, a source of power. The Rigvedic age women were the co-partners of life and enjoyed a high status, surpassing contemporary civilizations. In the Vedic age, women were loved, respected and held in high esteem like Sita, Draupati, Karnagi and so on. The story of entrepreneurship development began in ancient India. In history, women played a strong role in politics, war, diplomacy and administration. It was the foreign invasions to India that changed the profile of our woman. The success for female power is dream, believe and achieve. We are now open to question answer session to the audience. You can address the questions to the panel. Have we gone to sleep? <laughs> no questions? Any questions or can we conclude? Hi. Okay. I'll ask a question just to keep the ball, get the ball rolling. My name is Praveen. I'm from Melbourne. Uh, thank you for that wonderful breakdown of uh, the role of women. Uh, sorry, not role of women, but sorry. equality, uh, your views on equality and where men and women come in. I just wanted to, just to get the discussion going, I just wanted to understand what is your view in uh, men supporting women. So I've, I'm, a, I'm a father of a young child, so what is so background? So this is the background to the question. What is the role of men in supporting women going back to work? And likewise, on the reverse, what is the role of women empowering men, young fathers, in playing that role? Thank you. Okay, I got a lot to say. I have a, I have a lot to say about that. Um, so, uh, in, in my situation, my family, we've done all, all of the combinations. We've tried all of them. Um, again, I came from a traditional family background in the States where uh, my mom did work, so I thought it was possible for women to work, but in the f home it was very traditional and, you know, in, in roles and stuff. So I tried to be like that when I first got married. And I think my husband tried. He was one of three boys. Um, and I think he didn't know how to relate to women actually much yet. He didn't have sisters and all, right? And so we both tried our best to fulfill what we thought in our cultural context, what we were supposed to be. And that lasts for a little while. But if anybody's married in the room, you know that, how, how long? You know? <laughs> and so you're both like, OK, wait. Um, then we moved to Malaysia, which was another country. So we had to learn new cultural norms of how to operate. Then we started a family. So now we have new roles and titles as well. So I was working previously to children and then I took time off and he was working, but that's also because I wanted to be home. Okay. I'm not gonna be able to answer this fast, but anyways, um, the point is for me, I think that two people have to talk to one another and see what works for them and agree, right? and realize that it may change over time. So now we set kind of like time periods where we say, um, let's do a check-in, how's this going now? Not assume what decision you make for one period might be forever, but have regular touch-in times. But it's really down to, to that couple, isn't it? To decide how to work it out and what structure you need in your home to, 
to be able to have that happen. Do you need help? Do you need a cook, a cleaner? Do you need people to send your kids to school? Do you work it out yourself? All of that. So it's it's a plan. How you run a business and an operation, you, you kind of have to run your home that way as well if you're both going to participate outside of the home. Yeah. I think since time is up, we shall conclude. Thank you, Jasmine and Amy, for the valuable perspectives. So, you have a question? Sorry. Somebody has a question? Thank you, Achi. First of all, congratulations on your Nanathar way once again. Well, my question is, it's not about um, a girl or a boy or a man or a woman, you know. I understand that it is a practice, good old unwritten rules, which defined all those things. But in this generation, as a family, whoever is best for that role, we are going to take it, right? Whoever Rather? is best, are you able to hear? Whoever is best for certain role, if there is a role that has to be performed, in the family, whoever is, it, whether it's a man or women or a girl or a boy, they are going to perform that particular job. So, is it uh, more, we debate on how we can enlighten the people of having a democratic setup than that of inequalities? Is that the generation still we are in that we have to educate inequalities or uh, we are a little more mature to handle the democratic and whoever is the best out of the lot? will perform the duties. Is that, uh, is that something or still we have to educate all the surroundings on inequalities? Is, are we in the age of educating the inequality still or we are matured enough to handle it democratically is my question. More than education, we have to change our mindsets. That's what, we uh, we have to change the mindset and accept the change. Is the education required for that in this younger generation for youth and all or it is already over that I think uh, today our youth are very well exposed. So it, if we, uh, elder generation, change our mindset and accept this, I think it, it's easier for us. Uh, so maybe, maybe I can comment on that as well. I think, um, you know, in, in the family, in a marriage, in a relationship, as in a business partnership, I guess it's very important to understand what each party gets out of it. Um, and I think for many, many hundreds and maybe even thousands of years, the assumption would be the man goes out and gets the bread and put it on the table and then the women take care and make sure everybody's fed and you know, everybody stays alive. So, who's doing that, by the way? <laughs> right? So, um, I, and, and I think um, and, and if both, both parties are happy it, you know, with that setup and with that goal, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I think what we are here to make a point is that, you know, as society is changing, as, um, you know, people are moving from villages and concentrating in cities and all that, the structure of the society could mean that these roles may need to change. And as more and more women get educated, you know, into the workplace, and in fact, even in countries in Malaysia, there are more educated girls than there are educated boys. Um, you know, they might have a different idea of how they want to live their life already. Right? These things could have changed, right? And so what we are trying to say is maybe maintain an open view and allow these new, newly educated women, men or whatever um, to have a point of view that's different from what their fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers have done. Um, and when two parties get together, you know, have discussions, have strategic alignments every year, every 10 years, whatever that takes to make sure that the partnership is still working for both parties. I think that's, uh, that will be my point of view. I would, I, would like, I would like to conclude. Uh, taking a step back, equal leadership and partnership is about complementing one another, putting aside any ego and growing towards a better future. It is, each of our, it is in each of our hands to implement change and contribute to an equal society. To put it in simple terms, if there is a car, what does it need to function? Petrol. Similarly, we need two eyes and two hands to clap, uh, two eyes to see and two hands to clap. Similarly, man and woman are equal, essential contributors to our society. Spiritually, man is Shiva, a structure, the hardware, while the woman is Shakti and energy, a software. Shiva nilaye, Shakti ilai. 
like Ardhanareshwara, a symbol that glorifies the quality of the male and the female forms. Let us conclude on a lighter note. Everyone who wants to be born as a man, put your hands up. No? Okay, if you want to be born as a woman, put both your hands together and give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much, Achi.